One of the first cases who came to us had an infection following an ACL reconstruction one, at one year with severe pain and swelling in the right thigh. His symptoms started six months after the index surgery and persisted in spite of the primary surgeon's attempt at debridement and graft retention. When he came to us, he had an abscess in the thigh with osteomyelitis of the femur. There was no involvement of the joint or the tibia. We went in, debrided the thigh, scraped the femoral tun uh, tunnel, removed the, removed the implants, but we could retain the graft and not do an arthrotomy. On day five, the cultures were still negative, though the histopathology showed caseous granulomas. So here we thought of starting the patient of standard anti-tubercular therapy, but the inputs from the ID specialist told us there was an intervention in the form of an arthroscopy. Although the histopath and AFB smear were positive, gene expert was negative. So this was very likely to be a case of non-tuberculous mycobacteria. We extended the incubation, and on day 21, it grew Mycobacterium fortutum, which is an NTM. Appropriate antibiotics, which is not AKT, was started, continued for six months, and the symptoms resolved, and he had an infection-free follow-up at four years, with graft being retained. There are very few similar case reports of osteomyelitis following arthroscopy, so we reviewed our cases who had at least one previous debridement before presenting to us. There were 10 cases, eight following a knee arthroscopy, two following shoulder arthroscopy, and all of them were on empirical or targeted antibiotics for extended period with persistent infection. When we looked at the onset of infections, uh, there were five who had early onset infection after the index surgery within the first month, and five who had late infections after three months of the index surgery. But they came to us at a much la later stage, having had previous debridements and antibiotics. Now, there are certain classic differences between the two groups. The ones who had an early infection all had intraarticular involvement with portal site tenderness and adjoining osteomyelitis with restricted range of movement. Whereas the late onset infections had only extraarticular osteomyelitis with no joint involvement and full range of movement of the joint. Now, we had to resort to atypical or modified incisions in these early infections to excise the discharging sinus, the portals, the scars. Whereas in the late infections, we had to, we could get away with local excision of the sinus and the surrounding scar. The most important point was graft and the implants had to be removed in all cases with early infection, whereas we could retain the graft and remove only the offending local source like the ethibond, suture material, or the metalwork. Non-tuberculous mycobacteria were the causative organism in five of these 10, and we get, uh, got 70% culture positivity. Antibiotics were given for a period of six weeks to six months based on the causative microorganism. Two cases had a recurrence within six months of our debridement. One had a retained ethibond within the PCL bony avulsion. Once we went in, removed that bony piece and the ethibond, the infection settled. And this was in spite of having an MRSA on the first debridement and giving appropriate antibiotics. The second case had an arthroscopic bank art repair. After our debridement, cultures were negative. Empirically, he was treated for NTM but the sinus persisted and aspiration at one year grew Acromobacter and Staph epidomidis, and he settled with simple oral septran for three months. Finally, we could achieve infection remission in all the cases at a two-year follow-up. What this study shows us that early infections give us a small window to diagnose, address aggressively, avoid empirical antibiotics, and do not forget the role of histopathology. Because if we miss this small window, they end up having severe intraarticular involvement with poor prognosis compared to the late group, and ultimately, the joint biomechanics becomes questionable for which the primary surgery was done in the first place. Thank you.